Hey everyone, it's Marco. Today I want to talk to you about the best farming spot for a fresh level 60 who's not a mage. That's a lot of clarifiers, but that's also a large percentage of the player base. Now you are going to have a lot of competition with this spot because a lot of people farm here, but I'm going to give you the tips and tricks to outperform the other people. First up, you're going to want to get the quest right here, the Kumusha the Collector. He has two quests. One for an imperfect drain eye and one for a perfect drain eye drop. These drops are just another way for you to get greens. It's a repeatable quest and it just adds to the total amount of gold that you get. So okay. highest priority is going to be the Scorpid Pincers. Right now, each of them sell for almost three gold on my server. Now why do these things sell for so much? It's because raiders don't want to come out here and farm these items for their raiding buffs. And you want to make sure that you accept the quest again every time you turn it in and you get a free green each time. Uh, followed by the Blasted Boar Lung which, Lung, which is a gold 89. Vulture Gizzards are a gold 38. Basilisk Brains are 86. And Snickerfang Jowls are 29. Now you may be asking yourself, why would I ever kill a Snickerfang? Because they're, they're worth, you know, literally a fifth of some of the other items. Or even, even worse than that. It's because all these monsters, except for the vultures, share respawns with one another. So in this area right here on the map, sorry, it's annoying with all the little bags. These basilisks, hellbores, and fell beasts all share spawns. So if you just kill these basilisks and ignore the fell uh, beasts, you will eventually only have fell beasts. Same with the the boars and the basilisks. So if you just kill them, you will only have fell beasts. So if you ever see that situation, go out of your way and kill the fell beasts so that you can respawn some of the other types of mobs that are more valuable. But if you're, you know, going through your route and you can pick off a couple of basilisks, a couple of boars, uh, don't go out of your way to kill the fell beasts because it's just not worth it. They don't drop that much money. The different areas to farm are here where I'm at. Down here on, near the road. Um, and I'll show you the absolute best spot on the entire map as I go through here. So let's go to the next area. So we were just in this area here where the quest giver was. I wanted to show that off. Now moving up this path here, you can have some scorpids that spawn. They share spawn timers with the, uh, the what are they called, snickerfang? Snickerfang jowls. So these guys share spawns with the uh, scorpids. So if you don't see any scorpids, you're going to want to start killing these snickerfangs just so that you can start spawning scorpids. One of the mistakes players make is they don't kill these mobs and they just keep running around looking for the one mob that they need and it may not be available on the map. Moving up here, there are several vulture spawns that appear to always be vultures. They're typically in the spots with the black uh, soot and uh, so right now there's none there because he got killed over there. But, and this is another place where, because there's uh, snicker fangs, these sniggers can spawn as well. But those black slayers typically spawn in designated areas and don't change. So if you just check those spots on the map as you're going, there should be a black slayer there every single time. So they're over there with the black soot, there's typically a black slayer there. And uh, like this guy here, he's probably skipping the snicker fangs. He shouldn't do that. If you don't see any mobs that you want to kill, definitely take these guys out. Now, these guys here, the wretched lost ones, and there's another version of them that run around. Uh, they drop rune cloth and mage weave. So that's really nice to just like have one other thing that you're farming. It's always good to have a plethora of things that you're putting on the auction house. And one of the things I love about this farm is that I'm getting five different high priority items and not just one item th that you know if there's a lot of competition for I may not sell a lot so everywhere that you see a snicker fang that is a potential scorpid and scorpid is the most expensive item so as I'm going if I don't see any of the high priority mobs I'm killing the non priority mobs even the fell beast if it gets that bad because that's how you get monsters to respawn I think a lot of players don't understand that and it shows when you run through here and you see none of the high priority mobs. The big three are the boars, the scorpids, and the vultures. And that leads me to my next farm spot. Over here, just south of Netherguard Keep, 
is the best farm spot for those three guys. Now remember, the Snickerfangs share a spawn with the Scorpids. So you will see, um, like, sometimes a bunch of uh, Snickerfangs over here. But that's okay. Just take them out. And when you come back, there's a good shot. You're going to have not just vultures, not just boars, but also the Scorpids, which are the best ones. There's also a rare Scorpid that can spawn over here. And I'll show you that spawn point. Actually, I think that spawn point is down here where my mouse is. I forget if it's here or here, but it's one of those. Um, and I forget the name of the guy. He's like called Crack or something. Or uh, I honestly forget the name of the thing. But it's a rare spawn. It'll have a green on it. So right here, you can get the boars. There's a vulture back here. Oh, here he is. Somebody killed him. Uh, and these basilisks share the spawn with the boars. So if you don't see any boars, you're going to see some basilis basilisks. So it's just overall, this is like one of the best spots um, again everywhere you see a snicker fang that's a potential scorpid everywhere you see a basilisk that's a potential ash main boar or the other boar the hell boar and this is another spot right here that has a bunch of the black slayers that are guaranteed to spawn here they don't share spawns with anybody else so these are really really good to make some money again I am a low level paladin I have almost no gear I bought uh, two epics off the auction house, and that's pretty much my gear set. Resist? Stop resisting. Imagine getting resisted by a 47. It feels bad, man. So I'm, I'm doing good. I like to sell them in lots of 10, because that's what people buy them in. To turn into the quest givers up here. Guys, there's one other thing I want to point out. There are a series of ogres next to a cave with a very, very high density of ogres. Um, they cast a curse. So if you are a uh, non-mage or a non-druid, you're not going to be able to deal with the curse. It's annoying. It messes up your farming speed. I don't. I think it's either... Stamina or strength gets reduced by a significant amount, um, so I don't I don't recommend that for anyone else than someone who can decurse. But if you can decurse, and you're a mage, you probably wouldn't be at this spot because there are better places for mages. But if you're a druid, a feral druid, this is one of the better spawn spots for ogres that can drop rune cloth. Probably it only gets beat by Deadwind Pass. There's another farming spot really good for fresh 60s called Deadwind Pass. It's, uh, I think it's called Device, and it has a bunch of ogres in it that spawn, you know, high-level epics and, and other items. But we got a little problem to deal with here. The fell beasts are very annoying. Uh, I try not to kill them unless I absolutely have to. Here you can see there are a bunch of fell beasts because no one's been killing them. And so none of the Hellbores can spawn or Basilis in their place. So you got to make sure you clear these out once you start seeing that there's no other mobs available. This guy right here, he doesn't know that. He's skipping the Felbies. And, and so he doesn't understand that he is actually gimping his farming by not killing them. So these are the Ogres I was talking about. There's, a, there's actually more of them here uh, that can spawn. Just someone cleared them out recently. And I think there's like 15 of them in this small area. So you don't have to go anywhere to farm them. They drop rune cloth. They can drop some of the high level epics. And so I highly recommend this spot for a feral druid as a place to stop and just kill a bunch of mobs in between farming the other mobs. Now, if you have a gathering profession such as mining or herbalism, there are some really good nodes here. You just won't get any um, of the highest level nodes. So if you're somewhere around 225 for your gathering professions, this is a great place to get skilled up while you're farming. All right, guys, so that is the Blasted Lands number one farm spot for a fresh level 60. I farmed here for about 45 minutes. I have made 14, almost uh, so 32, let me say 33 gold. 45 gold 50 52 gold and let's say right around the 54 gold mark just in these items alone 
not including all of these items. And so you're making over a gold per minute on these monsters if you know how to prioritize them and you know how to get them to respawn. Unlike that 60 hunter that we saw, who was just running around the map trying to find the particular named mobs, that is the worst way to farm this area. What you want to do is prioritize the name mobs that you that you're looking for, such as scorpids, uh, blasted boar lungs, and the vultures. But if you don't see them, you've got to clear out the less expensive or less valuable mobs in order to get them to spawn. That's the key to this farm. A lot of 60s don't get that. And I've been able to make more than a gold per minute on a fresh level 60 paladin. And I don't even know how to play a Paladin. This is the first Paladin I've ever played. Alright guys, let me know what you think of Marco's first ever gold tip. Good luck and have fun.